Good morning everybody and welcome back to another Darkmire update video. Today is probably going to be the last one. Now today's video is going to be on the new agility training method, the Hallowed Sepulchre. Now this is by far my favorite piece of content released with the Darkmire update. It has probably one of the most click intensive yet engaging agility training methods or really skilling training method released to date. So today I'm going to be giving you a kind of quick introductory guide on how to do the sepulchre as well as my thoughts on the matter on whether I think it's good. If there's any feedback or changes I would recommend. Keep in mind this is on day number three. Personally I recommend we don't make any changes at least for a couple of weeks just to see how the content comes over because everything seems really hard at first but you know people figure out better ways, quicker ways, more efficient ways to do things. Uh, so I do think we should sit on it for a little bit. Okay, now to begin with here, the Hallowed Sepulchre has a couple of requirements. The main one is you need 52 agility to participate in it at all, otherwise you won't be able to go down into it. And as you get higher level agility, you will unlock further floors in the Sepulchre. At 52, you only have access to the first level. At 62, you get level 2. 72, you get level 3. 82, you get level 4. And at 92, you get level 5. There are two other sub-requirements, that it being 66 thieving if you want to loot any of the coffins down there. Now the other three recommended skill requirements are just for uh, looting when you're down there. So they are up to your discretion. They won't impact your experience rate, but they will impact your loot if you don't have all the recommended skills. Now there are two main ways to get here. If on the Draco Medallion, you can teleport to Darkmire and you should have that unlocked by default. Now from here, you need to run into the Northwest corner and it should only take a few minutes. Okay, here we are, just enter the mausoleum doors, and now we are at the Hallowed Sepulchre. Uh, I'd recommend talking to the Mysterious Stranger once. He'll give you a bit of a rundown on the minigame, as well as he's going to give you something called a uh, Hallowed Crystal Shards, and that is the other way to get here. Uh, this will teleport you directly here, and you're going to get five by default, just by talking to the Mysterious Man. Now, if you want to go ahead and buy more, you can. They cost one Hallowed Mark a piece, which really isn't too expensive. I'd maybe recommend buying ten of them, uh, just to have for a quick teleport here. Now while we're here, let's talk about the rewards. Now there are several different rewards here. There's a Mysterious Hallowed Goods shop which sells a bunch of different things, mainly that are used in the Hallowed Sepulcher. Well, we have the Hallowed Crystal Shard, which I just explained, teleports you directly here. Now there is the Hallowed Token, which will add an extra minute to the remaining time. Wouldn't recommend buying those because once you get decent enough at it, you won't really need these and they're 15 each, so it's definitely not worth it. Uh, the Hallowed Grapple will half the failure rate when you are grappling. The Hallowed Focus will half the failure rate of the Magic Treasure Challenge. The Hallowed Symbol will half the amount of items required to sacrifice, so that's the Vampiric Dust. The Hallowed Hammer will half the failure rate on nails, so when you're using your hammer and nails to build a bridge. The Hallowed Ring probably being the most promising. It will prevent players from taking damage from any of the traps and theoretically uh, prevent you from losing time, although from what people have told me and from what I've seen, it doesn't seem to save you that much time, but we're not quite sure about that yet. Uh, we have the Dark Die, uh, which is used to recolor one piece of Graceful, which, uh, which means you'll need six of these, or 1800 Hallowed Marks. And we have the Dark Acorn, uh, which cost 5000 and that is the pet recolor. So it is safe to say that this shop is fairly expensive. And finally here, there are two extra rewards you can get from Tomb Raiding. Keep in mind, you can only get these two from the final floor on floor number 5. That is the Ring of Endurance and the Strange Old Lockpick. The Ring of Endurance is probably the most valuable item released with this update. Uh, currently, it's going for somewhere around 100 mil as of the day I'm recording this. Essentially, you can charge this up with 1,000 doses of Stamina Potion. And in the future, when you use a dose, it's going to make it last twice as long. So it is very useful. Probably not worth 100 mil, but... Whatever, and then we have the Strange Old Lockpick, which uh, is a degradable item that allows you to fully pass the dungeon doors in the Barrows dungeon. Only has 50 charges though, so it's not worth nearly as much, but again, I think you can only find that in the very last floor, and it does seem to be pretty rare. Okay, so now for your inventory and equipment. Now there are two different kind of trains of thought here. If you're going only for experience, you really don't need many of these items. You will only need your Graceful set. Uh, maybe a couple stamina potions, your holy symbol, and some food. If you're going to be looting as you go, and that is the only way to get hallowed marks and any of these other rewards, you will need quite a few different items. In the sepulchre, there are four different instances or traps that you come upon that will require a specialized item or items to get past. There is the Ceridoan Braziers, which is going to require you to sacrifice vampiric dust. Two of them, unless you have the upgraded item, in which case it'll be cut in half. 
Uh, there is a broken bridge that you'll have to fix, which will require a hammer, a saw, and two planks and some nails. Personally, I'm just using uh, regular planks and steel nails. There is a grapple pillar, which is going to require you to have a crossbow and a mithril grapple. And finally here, there is a portal frame that you have to conjure, uh, which is going to require an enchant jewelry spell of any level, but a higher one is recommended. Which means to do this properly, you will need to be on the standard spell book. I do have the tier 7 enchant, however, that particular one doesn't seem to come up until you get into the lower levels. Currently, I have only 74 agility, which means I'm only completing the first three floors. Now, one last thing before I get into the sepulchre is, it is possible to get the same challenge twice, which that's why I'd recommend bringing multiples. Now, the only other items I'm bringing here is a bit of food, although if you're learning, I would recommend bringing maybe eight pieces of food. And I'm bringing some stamina potions. While they're not 100% required, they do come in handy, and sometimes you do run out of run, so they're nice to have. And it's super anti-poison because there is a chance you get poisoned if you are looting the chest. All right, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so once again, I'm only level 74, Julia, which means I only have access to the first three floors, so that is what I'm going to be doing an overview of. The pulled experience rate for what I should be getting is around 55,000 XP per hour. And in the first three floors, you come upon most of the different trap types, so it's a good introduction anyway. Now there are two entrances, it doesn't really matter which one you go into, just go into one of them. A message will pop up, but you can click yes, don't notify me again. Now the Hallowed Sepulchre has quite a few variants on how you go through it. You're going to get a random one every time, but I think there are only maybe three or four, which means you're going to learn them all fairly quickly. Okay, now the first trap we have here is the arrow trap. Now the first thing you'll probably notice after doing this a few times is the hitbox on these things are very strange and they can be kind of hard to see. Now the way you know which arrow is coming next is there's going to be a small movement on the statue and it's really important to look ahead and pay attention to that as you run through the sepulcher. The arrow trap is by far the most punishing one and the one you want to focus on the most as as you get further into this there'll be multiple combinations of arrow traps, flames, and other things. Okay, so we're going to start running up here, and we're just going to pay attention to the statue, and if it comes down our lane, we're just going to move right over. One at a time is pretty simple. Now next up here is the flame traps. Now if you have rune light, I would highly recommend marking the safe tiles. Now all of these tiles are safe, however, you don't necessarily have to do them one at a time. Now if you don't time it that well, you can do these one at a time. However, that is going to be quite a bit slower. Now if you have the timing down, you can go almost all the way through in one go. Now it just takes practice, but I would highly recommend just going for it and seeing how many parts of the flame you can get through at once, because overall that's going to save you a ton of time. Okay, so now I've come down here, you'll notice there's two options here. Now because I've been explaining how to do this, I've taken too much time. Now there is actually a time limit on each floor, uh, and if you take too long, you will not be able to loot the chest here, and you will not be able to continue on to the next floor. So what you'll have to do is you'll hit quick exit. We'll still get the agility experience, but we won't be able to continue on to the next floor. So we made pretty good time on the first floor here. Now we have two options here. We can go ahead and loot the coffin, which we'll do now. For this particular trap, we need our grapple and myth grapple. We'll run over here, go ahead and search the chest. Uh, if we successfully loot it, we're gonna get potentially a hallowed mark and something else. This time we got a hallowed mark and an adamant sword. Okay, so keep in mind here that looting the chest is going to vastly reduce your experience rate per hour. Personally, I wouldn't recommend looting most of the chests. The only one I personally do is the one with the vampiric dust because it is by far the quickest and doesn't reduce your experience per hour too much. Okay, so now we're on floor number two. Once again, we have a singular arrow trap. Uh, just run through it. Uh, we have the sword trap here, which is by far, I think, the easiest one. You just run past it. Don't even have to time it that well, and you should be able to make it past, no problem. Okay, next to where we have the portal trap, which personally, <laughs> I just run past, because half the time, the portals don't even activate. And uh, really, see, so look, I just ran over that one. And once you get to later into the sepulchre and there's multiple traps at the same time, the portals really are too random to try to predict or anything, so I just run past them. If you get teleported, you'll just deal with that. It's just too much work to try to dodge all the portals. Okay, so there we go. We're done with floor number two. That was pretty easy. Now, in my opinion, there's really only two actually challenging traps on the first three floors. And we're coming up to one of them in just a second here. Now, I think probably one of the more challenging traps on the first three floors is actually the Dance Dance Revolution trap. Now, the easiest way I find to do this one is to just straight up ignore the portals. Yes, they might teleport you, but it's way more important to focus on the arrows. Once you get good at it, you can start maybe juking around with the portals. 
but uh, there's just not enough leeway to dodge both of them at the same time. Okay, so we're going to be focusing entirely on the arrows and on the statues. We're going to be paying attention to which ones are going to be shooting next based on the slight movement they make. And we're going to make our movements based on that. Okay, so the left lane is open. Now we're going to go over to the middle lane. Now we're going to go over to the right lane. All the while we need to make some progress moving forward. Middle lane. Right lane. And now the right lane's free and we're just going to run right past. Another sword traps. Run past that one. Definitely the easiest trap by far. Now the Cerodome Embrasure is usually the only one to actually end up looting because it's so quick. All you do is just sacrifice your Vampiric Dust, go through the door, loot the chest. This one reduces your experience rate maybe only by 10% if you only do this one. Adamant Plate Body and a Hallowed Mark. Okay, so this one is probably the most daunting trap of the first three floors and maybe even the first four floors. It's the Triple Arrow Flame combo and there's a few things that you really need to get used to here. The first one is the Flame's Shadow. It's just a shadow. It's a little confusing, but really it's only going over where the flame is. Now the way this trap works is the arrows fire randomly at intervals between the three of them and the flames alternate between left and right. Now the easiest way I found to do this is first focus on where the flame is and then focus on where the arrow is coming from and just rotate back and forth. Can okay, I first appear we're going to hover our mouse over where the flames are now. So right there. And now we're going to run for it. Now we're going to pay attention to the back. We know the arrow is coming down the two left sides. And now we're going to go over to the next flame area. Run for it. Pay attention to the arrows. They're still coming down the middle. That's perfect. Go over the next flame. Okay, we know they're coming down the right side now. Focus on the flame. Check the arrows again. And we should be good. That one should disappear in time. And then we're going to run it to the right. I'll show you again in slow motion, but it's just going to take a bit of practice. Now one thing you might notice is I have a plugin for Ruinlight that is marking my destination tile. Now that plugin is called Tile Indicator. Personally I find it really useful because when you click on a tile it highlights it red and when it disappears that means your character is actually there even if the running animation is not complete. Which gives you a little more information because sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what tile your character is actually on. You could also uh, turn on to highlight your current true tile which would also be really useful. Although I haven't experimented with that one too much. Uh, once you get it though, it's actually pretty easy to get through that in a timely manner. Now as we don't have a higher level agility, we can't go down to the next floor anyway. We're just going to hit quick exit and now we're out. So in the background here, I'm going to do a couple more full runs, uh, unedited, just me running through it. And I'm going to show you what kind of precision and accuracy and speed is required to get close to the pulled experience rates. I'm not saying I'm the best at this by any means, and I'm definitely making some mistakes, so there is room for improvement. Uh, so the pulled experience rates are as follows. At level 52 agility, you're supposedly getting 36,000 an hour. At 62, you are getting 48,000. At 72, which is my current bracket, I should be getting close to 55,000 an hour. 82 is going to be 66,000, and 92 is 75,000. Now there's a couple considerations here. One is if you decide to loot every chest, you're going to be sacrificing a lot of experience. So that is going to be a pretty significant trade-off. Now, we don't really know what the GP per hour is here. I've had a couple of pretty good loots actually in the first three levels, one of them being two Sandview Serums. That alone is worth around 70,000 GP, which is pretty damn good. However, the bulk of the money is probably coming from that final chest, which could net you the rare rewards being the Ring of Endurance and the strange old lockpick. The Ring of Endurance once again being worth 100 mil, although that's on like day number one and two, so I'm sure it's going to drop a lot. Now how do I feel about the content overall? Personally, I actually love it. It's so much fun. I really enjoy running through it. Um, I enjoy the fact that you can get loot. The trade-off doesn't bother me too much. Now would it make some changes or suggestions? Yes, I mean, this is just my personal opinion and just based on the first three levels. Now a few kind of quality of life changes. One is the arrows. The arrows are incredibly finicky. Sometimes you run into the back of them a lot. I'm pretty sure they made it that way so that you couldn't like glitch through the arrows. Uh, but it does feel clunky and half the time I'm running and I just smack the back of one somehow even though I'm not even near it. Now in my experience, the experience rate that they propose is on the high end, like someone who's learning this is going to be getting drastically less um, and if someone is looting they're also going to be getting drastically less. Like just as an example, at my current agility level I have two options. One is I could do the Sears Village agility course with a diary for about 55k an hour or I could do the Hallowed Sepulcher for about 55k an hour if I'm lucky. Although granted I haven't practiced as much, I'm sure I could probably consistently get 55k an hour. But that would not involve looting. 
So realistically, at my level, if I want to get the same experience rate, I might as well do Rooftop Agility because at least I'll get Marks of Grace without losing almost any time, and that is worth a bit of money. With that said though, the Hallowed Sepulchre could actually be a much higher GP per hour with the Trade-Up being you're sacrificing a tremendous amount of Agility experience. As we don't really know the loot table for the chest, the GP per hour is a bit up for debate. All I know is this is very click intensive, requires a lot of work to get good at, and right now it doesn't seem to be giving me any more experience per hour than rooftops. Should we make a change yet? No, I don't think so. I think we should wait, see how good people get at this, uh, see what the GP per hour looks like, and then maybe you could consider buffing the experience rate a bit. Because there's just so many unknown factors here, like right now we don't know what the uh, price of, for example, the Ring of Endurance is going to settle at. If that is worth 50 mil going forward, then I mean, whatever. I mean, the, even if the agility rate is lower, the fact that you could make millions doing it would easily offset the lower experience, or at least the higher intensity. In my opinion, the only thing I want is for this really cool high intensity agility training method to be either the best experience rate or a pretty decent GP per hour, and then being equal to the best agility training method at that level. Because it would really be a shame if all this work and such a cool update wasn't worth doing for one reason or another. And the final thing I want to mention here is the rewards. I uh, don't have an issue with the rewards themselves, but the pricing. I mean, my god, for stuff like the Dark Acorn being 5,000 is pretty insane. Personally, I'm only getting maybe 30 or 40 Hallowed Marks an hour, which means to save up for the Dark Acorn to recolor my pet would be like 150 hours. To save up for Graceful, like 75 hours or something like that. That's a little bit much. I mean, we consider Graceful only takes, what? 10 hours to get and it's like by far the most useful and widely used item in the entire game but this one recolor is going to take 10 times that amount and I mean the dark acorn taking like just as much time to get the pet as the recolor does. I think that could be toned down a bit but otherwise honestly a pretty awesome update. I'm going to continue doing it just because it's fun even if the agility training isn't much better than anywhere else. Anyway guys that is going to be it for today's video. Those are kind of my thoughts on day one and just a bit of a guide for anyone who's looking to get into the Hallowed Sepulchre. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.